All right, so I want to talk just briefly about knurling. I'm not going to show you everything I went through and, and bore you. I'm just going to give you an overview and ask for some feedback. So the knurls that came with the quick release tool post that I bought, um, the knurl wheels don't say anything on them. Normally you'd have the pitch written on them or stamped into them or, or whatever, um, silk screened onto them. Um, but they're, it's not there. So I needed to figure out the pitch. Because what you do is you figure out the pitch, the tooth pitch, which is the distance between teeth, and that distance needs, needs to divide evenly into the circumference of the workpiece that you're going to knurl, so that when you roll the thing around and it comes back around to the beginning, the tooth falls into the initial tooth impression that was created. Um, so I needed to figure out the tooth pitch. So it's a three-quarter inch knurl wheel. Uh, which is a standard size, and so circumference is pi times three quarters. Um, and then you divide that by the number of teeth, or at least I think this is, should give me an accurate pitch for the, for the teeth. Um, and I counted several times, and I counted 37 teeth. So 2.3, I don't know, I've got it written down here somewhere, 2.355 or so, divided by 37, gave me a pitch of 64 thousandths of an inch. I thought that was pretty straightforward, but the neural turned out terrible. Um, and I did it a couple times. I'd, I did it once, the neural was terrible, so I turned the piece down and checked again to get a diameter that would um, be evenly divisible by 64 thousandths. And it was really close, within a thousandth probably, but the neural again was terrible. So I was just trying to think about what the problem could be, and I wasn't sure. But then what I decided to try is just to measure the pitch directly with my digital calipers. And I got 46 thousandths of an inch. And I think that was pretty close. But then again, I thought 64 thousandths would be the, the, the pitch. And those numbers are way off. So I turned it down again. This, I think, was my third attempt, so my piece is getting smaller and smaller, which is okay. I could have easily chopped that off and, and done a new one at this point. It's not a big deal. But I did the... turned it down to a diameter that should have worked with 46 thousandths, and it turned out, I think, better. Not not perfect. Um, anyway, I'd love some feedback from you guys if you know why my calculation of the pitch based on 3 quarter inch diameter and 37 teeth gave me 64 thousandths and my direct measurement gave me 46 thousandths, which seemed actually to produce a better neural. So I'm not going to show you all that stuff and, and waste your time. Um, so that's the knurling. Leave a comment if you have a clue what I'm doing wrong, and if you have any tips on producing a good quality neural. Alright, next uh, I routed out the interior of the cap. That was the same technique that I used to hollow out the body. So I won't show you that. Um, so now I've got a cap that's uh, ready to be threaded, ready to create the internal threads. And let me show you how I'm going to do that. All right, so this bit is the bit that I use to turn the external threads. Back on this end, I've got the uh, regular external threading uh, shape that I've used to do threading before and used on this project. So I just flipped it around and ground this on it. Um, and I, you know, measured using my little sterret gauge. And that's, that's pretty close. It's it's small, but I think it's, it's pretty good. Um, it's not pretty, but all that really matters is this little tip right here. And I think that's pretty good. So that's what I'll use to do the internal threading or at least attempt to do the internal threading. This was a brand new, and this is quarter inch, this is a 5 16 blank, which I hadn't done anything with yet. And I got a little relief here, so it doesn't rub on the roof of the cap. And I cut away some material here, and I'm left with just a small surface right here, which should be parallel to the bit. And I'll use this to cut a little bit of relief at the back of the cap, or at the top of the cap for the threading tool to go into. And I'll probably plunge this and then pull it out slightly maybe to create a little bit wider area. It just needs to be wide enough for this between that tip and the end 
It just needs to be at least that wide for this to go into. So that's the idea. Cut the relief and then do the threading. So I'm going to give that a whirl. So that's about a hundred thousandths thick. So the relief, I'll probably, I don't know, maybe go with 40 thousandths or something. I think I need to, uh, provide a little more relief on the bottom of this thing. It's rubbing on the inside diameter, I think. It doesn't want to cut. There's a little burr on the edge of that, but I'll just uh, speed it up and put a little sandpaper in there and get rid of that burr. Alright, I don't need to scratch it and check it with a gauge because I haven't changed the gears, so I know that the thread I make here is the same pitch as the one I made on the main body. And I'm just going to do this by hand because uh, I don't want to smash my bit into this thing and break stuff, which is probably what I would do. And I'm I'm not using the compound, I'm just gonna bring the cross side back a little bit at a time and cut the thread. And I did check the distance from the tip of the bit or the, the cutting tip to the end of it, and my relief is enough for the thread to go out the end and have a little breathing room without bumping into the, the top of the cap. should be able to hear when it quits cutting and then I'll know when I'm into the relief. There we go, I'm into the relief. So I'm going to go ahead and set the carriage dial to zero just so I have an idea when I'm approaching the relief. All right. That was just one thousandth. So, I'll cut a little more this time. Probably should uh, go ahead and just run it out with the motor. I'll probably do that. Run it in by hand and run it out by the motor. Well, let's do 5,000, so let's just see how it goes with that big a cut by hand. Coming up on the zero. slide in to give clearance and let's run it out with the motor. This time I'll leave the motor running. Make sure I go the right direction.
for those of you who are sharp-eyed might have thought, boy, those seem like really fine threads. <laughs> yeah, live and learn. So I said, oh, I don't need to worry about the thread pitch because I didn't change the gears. What I did do, however, is change the quick change gearbox because I was doing a an auto feed and I wanted a smoother cut so I switched this over to C which gives a slower feed and a finer thread and since I'm brain dead most of the time I didn't think of that so I made a new one yeah, and actually it was pretty quick to make um, and I did maybe boy three or four passes of my little threading tool here is it going to focus? three or four passes of my threading tool seriously that's it and I thought okay I should go ahead and check it I didn't think I was there yet but maybe I am learning so I stopped and I'm not kidding you just three or four passes before any fit, test fit at all. And it is, I don't know, probably about as good of thread as I am capable of cutting. And I did it the same way I was showing you by hand and you can see this thread is much coarser than the other one and voila just like that turning that chuck by hand a couple times and I got a thread So I just parted this, and it's a pretty good finish, but I'm going to run over some sandpaper. I didn't show that because parting is no big deal. Um, I put a little bit of a, a gouge in there, probably when I was cutting the relief, but I don't think that's a big deal. So let's 
clean this up a little bit. This might be too fine. Probably could use some 320, but I'm not sure if I have any. All right, ran out to the garage and got some 320. So I went from 220, and this is 320. And then I'll go to the 600 to finish it off. I think that's good enough. on its own anyway. Hey guys, so I'm done with the whistle, and I'm real happy with it. Um, by the way, it's called a whole tone whistle, H-O-L-E, or a tea kettle whistle, or even a, a bird call whistle. And you can find lots of information on these, this whistle and all kinds of other whistles on Wikipedia. It's a huge article with lots of Greek characters and scientific terms and stuff, so pretty complicated. So I didn't get into that too much, but that's a whole tone whistle. Um, and uh, I couldn't stand the suspense of trying it on the tea kettle first, so once I put it together, I blew on it, and it whistled, so that was a relief. I brought it down and showed it to my wife, and remember I told her uh, I would make her a, a whistle for this tea kettle probably a year ago, and I'm finally doing it, or I finally did it, and uh, she blew on it, and it just made some funny sound, it didn't whistle, and then she sucked on it, and it whistled, and she started laughing hysterically because she said I made it backwards. So that was pretty funny. Uh, anyway, it works, and I'm real pleased with it. Couldn't be happier. Um, you know, kind of stumbled along, but it ended up turning out real nice. So here it is. Take a listen.